Hello and welcome to Infinity. Sometimes when working with edges, it's useful to refine them a bit rather than just get what you're given. Let's see what we mean. Hit the layer there, hit Control J to do a duplicate. We need a duplicate because there's a destructive thing here. When I go to Filters, Detect, and Detect Edges. If I zoom into this, you can see what I mean here is there's a whole bunch of texture lines here which you may well not want. The basic trick to do this is go to Live Filters and Gaussian Blur and then without changing anything we're going to look at the blend modes. So what we're effectively doing is like doing a duplicate layer uh, again of this and then blending them together so it saves a bit of memory. So I go to here and I'm going to go to these down here, the overlay and down. So overlay immediately there's some of that text has disappeared. If you go down here, you get a vivid light and it disappears very quickly. A lot more goes of that text. It really keeps the out uh, the major lines. Linear light is fairly similar. Pin light, not what you need. Hard mix is very crunchy hard edge. You can use that. I normally use vivid light. Now then. We can also, from here, play with the radius. Because if I look at the things here, as I turn up the radius here, effectively I'm adding a blur, I'm removing other things. Yeah, so you can find something here that's going to work for you. Right, what else can we do? We can also play with levels. Um, the reason to do that is if I go over here, here I've got the horse's hair, and hair, hair tends to be very bitty like this, so I'd like to uh, kind of reduce this a bit. So I go back up to this, and I go to the adjustments and levels. And now if I pull the black up, it's going to start to drop out those there. You've got to watch out when doing this, because although it looks great and I can go all the way up here, you may find that other areas of the image you're going to kind of start losing things you want to keep. Let's use the navigator there, so that's going to be up. Yeah, so if we're looking back up here, see here, I'm going from here, I'm losing things down here. So you've got to find a balance within the image of losing some things but keeping others. So there we go with that. Uh, what else might you do? If you want to see it in black and white, um, which is also useful if you're going to do a mask, then we just simply go to the black and white control here. But no, also, you can by adjusting these, let's zoom out a little bit, then we can have bring things in and out. You can watch what's happening, just swish things up and down and see whether it gets you what you want. And you can always go back to the other controls here because these are still adjustable so I can still look to find the right balance for things here and so on and go back to the blur. And if you want to see it the other way around then you can always go to the adjustments and go to invert. That gives you nice black lines on white. But if you're going to do a mask then you do turn that invert off and we're going to take this picture here. So I click on the background and I'm going to go to the channels here and I go down to the composite and it doesn't matter which one I use because it's all black and white so the red, green and blue are all the same. Right click one of these and say create spare channel and what this is going to do is copy this black and white down here into the spare channel which I can then reload as a mask or as a selection. It's really handy stuff. So I'm going to turn off this top layer, go to the bottom layer here and say let's apply this here and what we're going to do is we can use any sort of thing, you can do curves and so on, but let's do a sharpening. So I go to live filters here and go to the unsharp mask and I'll just go into a bit more detail here and then if I say turn the radius and the factor up, you, you you could get to a point where you're going, oh, it is rather crunchy, but I might like what it's doing on the edges here, so I just want to constrain things to the edges, and that's where that mask comes in. So I right click on the spare channel and say load to unsharp mask alpha. 
And what's happened now is, is only those white areas of the mask have come in, so only those edges are being sharpened. However, when you look at it closely, you can see, well, it's kind of, it's a bit, still a bit crunchy on that. What can I do? And the thing you can do is, because if I look at this alt click on the unsharp mask there, it's because the mask is fairly white here. But I can go and blur this, and sort of put a, a fade onto the edge of it. So I've got a filters blur. I've got to use this one because I can't use non-destructive one on this here. So I go to Gaussian blur. And I can now sort of adjust this to get a softer edge and apply that, then click back up here. And now my sharpening has been, is a lot better now. If, by the way, if I get to a point here going, oh, I really want to start again, I don't like that, that blur, go down to the unsharp mask, right click on the spare channel and reload it up to there again. And so overall then you, what you get is a, an image here, which if you can turn off, here's the original and here's the sharpened image. Yeah, there's the original and there's the mask sharpening, so it's only those edges that you do. Anyway, that's it. Thank you very much for watching.